Meet Noland Arbaugh, a 30-year-old from Arizona who, in a groundbreaking medical procedure, became the very first person to have a Neuralink brain-computer interface implanted. You might picture a large device with wires and flashing lights, but according to Noland it's far from that. He says he wouldn't even know it was there if he didn't recall the surgery. Imagine having a computer chip in your skull and electrodes in your brain tissue, yet feeling no sensation at all. That's Nolan's reality, paralyzed since 2016 due to a swimming accident. He describes the implant as completely unnoticeable, like it's just a part of him. But while the Neuralink chip may be physically subtle, its impact on Nolan's life. He reveals that the device has allowed him to reconnect with the world in ways he never thought possible. Think about the freedom to control digital devices with your thoughts, to communicate effortlessly, to engage with the online world in a whole new way. That's the kind of transformation Noland has experienced since receiving the implant in January as part of Neuralink's groundbreaking human trial. This is just the beginning of a new era in brain-computer interface technology, and Noland Arbaugh is at the forefront. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into his incredible story and explore the potential of this revolutionary device to change lives. Brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, may not be new to the world of science, but the technology has been thrust into the spotlight thanks to the renowned entrepreneur Elon Musk and his company, Neuralink. While BCIs have been around for decades, the buzz surrounding Neuralink has ignited a renewed public interest in this potentially life-changing technology. For individuals like Noland Arbaugh, who live with quadriplegia, BCIs offer a glimmer of hope. By recording electrical activity in the brain and translating it into actions, these devices can enable people to regain control of their lives and interact with the world in new ways. But BCIs aren't just for those with paralysis, they hold promise for people with a range of disabilities and neurodegenerative diseases. So how do BCIs actually work? Think of them as translators for the brain's language. They pick up on the electrical signals generated by neurons and convert them into commands that can control external devices. Imagine being able to open and close a robotic hand, click a computer mouse, or even communicate your thoughts directly to a screen, all with the power of your mind. BCIs come in different forms, each with varying levels of invasiveness and precision. Some use external sensors placed on the head, while others require electrodes implanted directly into the brain tissue. Neuralink's implant falls into this latter category, aiming to get as close as possible to the source of neural activity for optimal signal clarity. But, the potential of BCIs extends far beyond simply restoring lost functions. They could revolutionize communication, enhance learning and memory, and even unlock new levels of human creativity. Now let's dive a little deeper into the science behind Neuralink's innovative approach. Capturing neural activity, as Douglas Weber, a neuroscientist at Carnegie Mellon University puts it, is akin to trying to eavesdrop on a conversation between two people in a bustling stadium. To make sense of anything beyond the general noise, you need to get as close as possible to the source. This is where Neuralink's technology shines. By threading flexible electrodes directly into the brain's motor cortex, they're able to position sensors right next to the individual neurons responsible for movement. It's like having a front row seat to the brain's inner dialogue, where every whisper and murmur can be heard with crystal clarity. While groundbreaking, Neuralink isn't the first to venture into this territory. The Utah Array, a grid of silicon spikes developed in the 1990s, has long been the gold standard for intracortical BCIs. In 2004 it even enabled Matthew Nagel to control a computer cursor using only his thoughts. Neuralink's design, however, builds upon prior research and takes it a step further. By replacing the rigid Utah Array with a network of thin, flexible threads dotted with electrodes, they've created a system that's not only more precise but also less invasive and potentially safer for long-term use. This innovative approach is a testament to the rapid advancements being made in the field of brain-computer interfaces. With each new development, we're inching closer to a future where the boundaries between mind and machine blur, opening up a world of possibilities for those with disabilities and beyond. Let's break down the Link's impressive capabilities. Its circular hub connects to 64 incredibly fine threads, containing a total of 1,024 electrodes. That's roughly 10 times the number of electrodes in a Utah array, a significant leap in potential data collection, but it doesn't stop there. The Link transmits compressed neural data directly from the brain via Bluetooth. This data is then processed by a sophisticated algorithm tailored to each user's unique neural patterns, which translates the signals into actionable commands. 
It's a symphony of technology, harmonizing the brain's intricate language with the digital world. Now let's talk about the incredible things Noland Arbaugh can do with this revolutionary device. Within just a week of receiving the implant, he was able to move a digital cursor on a screen using only his thoughts. This feat is achieved in two remarkable ways. The first method, which Arbaugh describes as attempted movement, involves him simply willing his paralyzed limb to move, even though it no longer can, by activating the muscles in his hand which are still capable of slight movements and going through the mental motions of using a mouse, he can effortlessly navigate a cursor across the screen. He describes it as incredibly intuitive, like a natural extension of his mind. The second method, called imagined movement, involves him visualizing the path he wants the cursor to take. By focusing his mental energy on the desired trajectory, Arbaugh is able to guide the cursor across the screen with remarkable precision. He often uses both methods in tandem, adjusting his approach depending on the task at hand. Attempted movement requires a bit more physical exertion, while imagined movement demands a higher level of mental focus. But the beauty of it is that both allow for multitasking. Nolan can carry on a conversation, enjoy a meal, or even just relax while effortlessly controlling his computer. This newfound ability has opened up a world of possibilities for Nolan, enabling him to communicate, create, and connect with others in ways he never thought possible. It's a testament to the incredible potential of brain-computer interfaces to restore independence and empower individuals with disabilities. Before the Neuralink implant, Arbaugh's interaction with technology was limited and cumbersome. He relied on voice commands or a mouth stick on a touchscreen, which required assistance to position correctly. These methods, while functional, were slow, tiring, and lacked the independence and comfort that most of us take for granted. The BCI has revolutionized Arbaugh's digital experience. He can now accomplish tasks faster, more independently, and with far greater ease. The ideal BCI, according to Dr. Lee Hochberg, a leading expert in the field, should feel as natural as able-bodied voluntary movement. Hochberg, who has conducted numerous BCI trials and studies, envisions a future where technology seamlessly integrates with our thoughts and intentions. Interestingly, Hochberg often measures a device's success by how little the user can describe their experience. When participants can't pinpoint exactly how they accomplished a task, it's a sign that the BCI has become second nature, blurring the line between thought and action. This effortless interaction is the ultimate goal, allowing users to focus on the task itself rather than the technology behind it. For Arbaugh, the Neuralink implant has brought him closer to this ideal. It has liberated him from the constraints of his disability, allowing him to engage with technology in a way that feels natural and intuitive. This is a significant step forward not only for Arbaugh but for the entire field of BCI research, as it demonstrates the potential to restore independence and enhance the lives of individuals with disabilities. Noland Arbaugh's achievements with the Neuralink implant go beyond mere cursor control. He has shattered records, reaching a remarkable 8 bits per second, a measure of both speed and accuracy. Neuralink has even released a cursor control benchmark, a square clicking task, so you can compare your own abilities to Arbaugh's. With his newfound control, Arbaugh can now spend hours browsing the web, sending text messages, scrolling through social media, navigating apps, and most importantly, indulging in his favorite video games. Online chess and the immersive world of Civilization VI have become his go-to pastimes. But like any new technology, the Neuralink implant isn't without its challenges. One notable drawback, Arbaugh admits, is the need for regular charging. This can interrupt his gaming sessions, forcing him to don a special hat equipped with a wireless charger to power up his implant. It's a far cry from the plug-in BCIs commonly used in research settings, but a necessary compromise for the convenience and freedom that the link provides. Overall, Arbaugh's experience with the link has been overwhelmingly positive, save for one alarming incident in February when the device nearly malfunctioned. It's a reminder that while the technology holds incredible promise, it's still in its early stages and requires continuous refinement to ensure seamless integration into everyday life. Despite the overall success of the implant, Arbaugh encountered a setback about a month after his surgery. He experienced a significant loss of functionality in his implant, initially suspecting a software glitch. However, the Neuralink team revealed a more concerning issue, a hardware problem. According to Arbaugh, a staggering 85% of the implant's threads had retracted, or moved out of their intended positions. 
This meant that the majority of the electrodes were no longer in direct contact with the targeted neurons, hindering the device's ability to record and interpret brain signals effectively. This revelation was not publicly acknowledged by Neuralink until a blog post on May 8, months after the issue was initially detected. This delay in disclosure has raised questions and concerns about the transparency and communication practices of the company. Despite repeated inquiries from Scientific American Neuralink has remained tight-lipped about the thread retraction issue, leaving many to speculate about its cause and potential implications. The setback was a devastating blow for Arbaugh. He had just started to unlock the full potential of the implant, only to have it seemingly slip away. That was really hard to come to terms with, he admits. I was just sinking my teeth into it. I'd reached this high place, and after a month it felt like it was all going to come crashing down. This experience highlights a crucial aspect of human BCI research, the immense psychological toll it can take on participants. As Weber points out, the possibility of disappointment and anxiety is a significant risk. Imagine the stress of experiencing a spinal cord injury for the first time, he says. Now, imagine having to go through that again. Fortunately, Neuralink's engineers were able to salvage the situation. By adjusting the system's algorithm to focus on the remaining functional electrodes, they restored much of the implant's capabilities. Arbaugh has since showcased his impressive cursor control in video demos and claims to be back to breaking speed records. However, the fixes haven't been without their quirks. To compensate for the retracted threads, Arbaugh now makes selections on a screen by hovering the cursor in place for a brief period instead of clicking. It's a temporary workaround, but it demonstrates the adaptability and resourcefulness of both Arbaugh and the Neuralink team. We're planning to go back to a single click where I initiate it, Arbaugh assures. But for now, this unique solution serves as a reminder of the challenges and complexities involved in developing and implementing groundbreaking technologies like BCIs. While Neuralink has shared some of Arbaugh's experiences through blog posts and videos, the lack of a formal scientific report leaves many questions unanswered. George Maliaris, a bioelectronics expert at the University of Cambridge, emphasizes the importance of peer-reviewed data for understanding the technology's nuances. The exact cause and extent of the thread retraction remain unclear. Did the threads move due to a specific event, or is it a gradual process? Have they stabilized in their new positions or are they continuing to shift? These are crucial questions that can only be answered through rigorous scientific analysis. We have to wait until papers are published with data, Maliara says. Despite these uncertainties, Neuralink has received the green light from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration (FDA) to proceed with the clinical trial and implant a second device in another participant. In an attempt to address the retraction issue, the company plans to implant the threads deeper into the brain, a strategy that has been approved by the FDA. It's a strategy worth testing, assuming it doesn't change the safety profile, says Weber. They wouldn't do it if the FDA didn't think it was okay, so it's got to be something that was already approved in their protocol. Hopefully it fixes the problem. This move highlights the iterative nature of technological development, where setbacks and challenges often lead to valuable insights and improvements. While the thread retraction issue raises valid concerns, it also underscores the importance of continued research and refinement in the pursuit of safe and effective brain-computer interfaces.